All right, folks, I'm going to try to walk you through um, setting up MAMP and Dreamweaver and a virtual server and maybe some Drupal, maybe some WordPress. So I have downloaded and installed MAMP. And here it is in my applications folder. It actually is a folder, and here is the actual program, MAMP. So I'm going to start by launching that. Yours may or may not ask for a password every single time you launch it. All right, um, I have launched. Uh, it says there's a start servers button, and this says one's off and one's on. Before we do anything, uh, we want to go into the preferences. Under stop start, you can probably leave it the way it's set. Under ports, you want to click set to default Apache and MySQL ports. Let's see, PHP we can leave. I was just asking what version. And this is important under Apache, we actually want to choose what folder we want to run our virtual server in. Um, so we would hit select and we would create something and put it here. I'm actually going to make a new folder and call it PHP. I'll put it on the desktop and then I'll just tell this to use that. So that is where our server is going to live. Um, Let's click on Start Servers and see if it goes. <laughs> well, one of them went. The other did not. So if you are running into this problem, it's actually an easy fix. You go to your Applications folder. Way down to the bottom, Utilities, Activity, Monitor. In here, you should find something called MySQLD. I've got two instances of it. I'm going to quit both processes. Let's do quit. I'll do force quit, sure. I want to make sure they go away before I go back. Let's see. Let me go back to here. Oh, it looks like they're both gone. All right. So let me click start servers. Hey, okay. They're both on. So you can see how that should fix it. If you were having the same problem with the Apache server not turning on, you see these HTTPDs? We're thinking that's what does it. So you could quit all of those as well. Okay, so at this point we've got MAMP running, and it is running out of this PHP folder. That is where the server is. So in Dreamweaver, I, we basically have to tell Dreamweaver the exact same information. So I'm going to create a new site in Dreamweaver, and uh, let's call this virtual server test. I don't know. So local site folder. We actually need to choose that exact same folder we told MAMP to use, which is this PHP one. All right, so we got it locally set up under servers. We need to add one. Here's the elusive plus button. Server name, uh, vir virtual one. It really doesn't matter what you call it. Connect using local slash network. That's important. All right, server folder. Anytime it's going to ask you for a folder, Choose that same one. So we've got three instances now where we've chosen that folder. This is a little uh, potentially confusing. Web URL under HTTP colon slash slash, just add local host as one word, a lowercase, and a trailing slash. OK, you got all that? Under the Advanced tab, we would say under Server Model, PHP, MySQL, and hit Save. All right, so this is a summary of it, but you see it's saying it's a remote server, not a testing server. We're going to have to switch those. And I'll hit save. If you ever get this warning, it's fine. It's basically just saying you've already got a, a site that's using that folder. I don't care. All right, so it is looking in to this folder. Now, I don't have anything, so I'm going to create a new file. Let's see if this works. I recommend you do the same thing. We're going to create a new PHP file. Of course, it just looks like HTML but it has a different extension. Let me add this code. And you know what? Let me really quickly just make my font really ludicrously large so you can actually read it. So we'll start with a little PHP declaration and then we'll close PHP. So I'm gonna say echo hello world as you do, semicolon. All right, now let me save this page. I'll call it index. It doesn't really matter. 
if I want to preview it, I have to use this preview in a browser function in Dreamweaver. So let me click here and choose, sure, preview in Safari. And I do, and if it works, you should get hello world. If it doesn't work, then you probably did something, well, you could have done something wrong with your PHP, but it's pretty short PHP script. So probably the error would be in your MAMP setup, or it would be in uh, your Dreamweaver setup. So if you ever have to alter your MAMP setup, just go back to this Preferences folder. Make sure you got the right document root selected. That's the most important thing. In Dreamweaver, you oh, it's uh, every time you even don't change something in MAMP, it prompts you. In Dreamweaver, if you go to Site and Manage Sites, this is where you can go in and click Edit and adjust anything you might have gotten wrong. Uh, yeah. Okay, so mine worked, though, so all is well. So after I've run that test, now I can do other things. So I could uh, test that contact form like we were doing in class. What I'm going to go ahead and do, just to see if I can get it to work, is try to install Drupal. So um, let me hide Dreamweaver. Goodbye. Here's my downloads folder. Let's see. I've got Drupal 7.9.zip, so let me unzip that. Thank you, OS X. So here is Drupal-7.9. I'm just going to take this whole folder and drop it into my PHP folder. So if I go back to Dreamweaver, I might have to hit refresh in my file list. Okay, here is Drupal-7.9. Dash, dash Stretch this out a little bit. So there's all these install files. One of them is install.php. If I launch that guy, it's just a bunch of PHP that we don't understand. But if I then preview it in Safari, it should give me the option to install here. So let's see, selected installation profile, standard seems fine. English seems fine. Database type, MySQL, definitely. So now this is gonna ask us for a database name. Now how in the world would we know a database name? So this is actually the only hard part of our Drupal install. Um, well, let me tell you how to do that. <laughs> I'm just gonna minimize some of these things so we have some room. So I'm gonna go back to MAMP and click on this open start page. So when you launch open start page, it gives you a little summary. This is the name of your host, local host. It's the port you're using, username and password, root, root, lowercase, nice and easy. Well, there should be a button up here. This is a nav, you click on PHP my admin. Uh, I know this looks really old school. It is really old school. Um, although they've been updating it all the time, I guess. Huh, I didn't know that. Uh, I'm gonna click on this databases button on this terrible nav. Let's see if this nav actually stretches out if I stretch the page out. Yeah, it does. So I clicked on databases. This lists four databases. Now I can tell you, I created this PHP test. You probably would have these first three. Let's say I want to make a new database, and I do. I want to make a database that Drupal will use. Now I'm not going to create any content for the database. I'm just going to make it. So down here, create new database. Well, let's make one called Drupal. And under collation, if I'm not mistaken, Drupal requires that you use the UTF-8 underscore bin uh, encoding. So I'm going to scroll way to the bottom. Here we go, UTF-8 bin, and I'll hit create. Database has been created. Yay. So if I go to databases, you'll see there's Drupal listed right there. Now why in God's green earth did I do that? Well, if we go back, if I can find it, to this Drupal, it's asking me for database name. I'm going to say... It's called Drupal, and my username and password are root, root. So I'll save and continue. Now, it should, it takes a second, but it should get to this initializing, and it's installing Drupal at this point. So you are good to go if you've gotten to this point. There is another page, so you know, but it is not difficult. Let me just quickly go over it. But I ask you for a site name. Now, this is just whatever you want to call it. So if you were setting up a site for an ice cream store, this is where you'd name it, Joe's Ice Cream or whatever. The email address is actually how it will email you. So I would, th I would think about it in terms of how you want the site to think of you. Like if someone's going to get in touch with someone on the site, what email would they use? Enter that. And just so you know, site maintenance under username and password, uh, this stuff is actually how you would log in to Drupal in the future. So we've created this site. In order to administer it and change anything, we would have to log in from now on. So if we did the same thing we did for the install, that is in Dreamweaver, we open up the, uh, well, this is in the install.php. What we would do to launch Drupal 
is launch index.php and then preview it in a browser. Now, I'm not going to do that right now because I'm still configuring my site. And actually, I don't know if I'm going to bother configuring my site. Well, I guess I can. Site name. Well, my not well name it Joe's Ice Cream. Got to stick to my guns here. All right, username. I'll go with bwalsh5. And let's see, I got a good strength. I will accept that. Server settings, default country, you can leave that to none. Uh, default time zone, you should recognize the correct one. Uh, check for updates, sounds good. Receive email notifications, meh. I don't know, whatever you want to do. Save and continue, and we're done. So we can visit our new site. So it just looks like this, and we'll get into how to add content in our next class. And there's the name of our site. So if I close this, and I'm in Dreamweaver, and I want to get back to that page the next day or something, I launch index.php out of that Drupal folder, and then I would just ask to preview it in Safari. And it will bring me to Joe's Ice Cream. All right, now I'm already logged in. If I was logged out, it would look like this, and I would have to enter my credentials here, which I believe I remember because I just entered them. Log in, we're in, and now I can add new content. So that's the basic setup for MAMP and... Uh, Dreamweaver to use a virtual server, and we went ahead and did this Drupal install. The WordPress install is about as easy, um, but I'm not going to do that now um, because I'm finished here.